a lot of beginners struggles while designing a structure because they don't have a clear path to follow the biggest question is often where do i even start when they are assigned to a new project they are always confused about what inputs they will require from the project coordinator or architect how to arrange the framing plans what load data is required and how to study the soil report all before even working in stack so today we are discussing the design methodology you should follow before starting any particular project and before analyzing and designing in this stack pro Hey engineers, welcome back to Civil Nirman where we turn complex structural concepts into practical insights. Today we are breaking down the structural design methodology. Now see that's just a fancy way of saying how we plan and design a building before any construction project starts. Whether you are new to this or just want to understand the basics, I'll guide you through each of the steps in simple terms. So let's jump in and see how it all comes together. Here are my seven important tips: information gathering, conceptualization, load evaluation, computer analysis and design, computer added design, code implementation for the detailing and coordination. So the first and most important point is information gathering. See, I have already created a detailed video on the key points that you should keep in mind before starting a stat model. You can check out this through. the link which is provided in the description box okay from there you will get all the inputs that you will required however here is a quick summary for you from that particular video so the first thing is collect all the relevant information which is related to your building factory or the area which is under consideration for your design second most important point is the soil report check the water table chemical analysis and type of foundation suggested by the geotechnical engineer for the soil report as well we have detailed playlist you can check out link in the description box see Design the loads based on the usage, which is global or local loads. Materials for the construction based on the strength and ductility and the grade specification suggested by the geotechnical engineer and weather conditions. Architectural plans, sections and elevations. Future expansion requirement. Grant free load data if it is applicable to your structure and the relevant design code. Now the next important point is the conceptualization. See, the purpose of conceptualization is to come up with the structural frame, approximate member sizing, general arrangement of the structure in such a way that the final design and the concepts are close to each other. So for that you can prepare the structural framing plan and discuss it with the concerned architect and provide your suggestion and his consideration based on the design and the architectural purpose. Discuss the other options options and provide your own suggestions including those on the planning perspective discuss and finalize the approximate member sizes and locate it on the plane of paper to identify it in the form of design so that it will be easy for you to plan and design in this stack decide your column and beam sizes based on the good engineering practice here is the table for the beam from where you can decide preliminary sizing based on the span you can check out this list similarly for the column as well we have this list based on the above to prepare an architectural section showing clearance and the available spaces to visualize how this space is going to feel and look like with the structure and what you can do to improvise the architectural coordination with your structure design the next most important point is load evaluation see the purpose of load evaluation is to come up with the approximate loads on the various members before actually doing the analysis on the computer see this will help in providing a better understanding on the expected loads to the design engineer and it shall also be helpful for the reviewing engineer to check the work done by the engineer see you can utilize the area method to calculate the loads on the columns and foundations for calculating total weight of the building you can utilize average thickness of the concrete which is multiplied by area into the concrete density for the self weight similarly loads due to masonry and other such partitions can be evaluated utilizing the architectural drawings we will discuss this particular portion separately how you can calculate the loads for the static check in some other session similarly for calculating the loads due to live load and other uniformly distributed loads you can utilize area multiply by the load to arrive 
at the total load for calculation purpose. Now see, for calculating the seismic weight of the building, you can utilize self weight, reduce live load, machinery loads and any other specified loads to arrive at the total weight which is your seismic weight. Now this seismic weight calculated by the above method can be multiplied by the AH that is your horizontal acceleration coefficient as per IS 1893. Now the above calculation can then be utilized to compare what is obtained using this stat or ETABS or any other particular design software. Now see, next important point is the computer analysis. You can specify the material properties to the various members according to your Indian standards or any other country code specification based on the code provision for which you are designing your structure rather than using the default values from the software. Use load combination as per the code for strength and serviceability checks. Provide load combinations for the foundation design. Provide loads and seismic criteria in the model as per the load evaluation done earlier. You can utilize IS1893 provisions for carrying out the analysis. For the earthquake case, a modifier for the beam and column stiffness have to be used while for gravity this is not applicable. See. You can check all the irregularities in the structure and also provide torsional eccentricity for the building. The next important portion come is the computer added design. Now see, for the dynamic part, whether you need to go for the dynamic or the static analysis, you can check out this segment where I have briefed for the particular building where you have to perform static and where you have to go for the dynamic analysis, right? Provide design segment analysis accordingly. Provide design commands instead using the common specifications that we generally use for the Indian code. Currently, I am discussing for the Indian code specification only. You can use Utilize all the design parameters, relevant stat design parameters for designing column, beams and slab. You can compare the computer results with the manual calculation as well. Check the bending moment utilizing the structural analysis one fundamentals like WL square by 10 or 12. Similarly, you can check the columns using the portal method of W into H by 2 for obtaining the column moments in the earthquake cases. Similarly, for the computer edit design portion, see for major building as a philosophy, let us design the building. You can design it in ETABS and start to compare the result as well. Check the design philosophy of the American codes and implement the same in Indian context wherever it's required. See, in some of the cases in our Indian code, we don't have particular clauses. So you can utilize those particular clauses. Check on irregularities, design of connectors, coupling beams, which are examples which are best in the American code. Cross check the start design using the manual methods of code like MU divided by BD square similarly for the column design and for columns calculate the actual effective length using the appendix of the IS 800 or IS 456 whichever is applicable. Also verify the deflection of the member using the crack section. The next most important point is code implementation for the detailing part. See, implement requirements of IS13920 in detailing of the building and their components like slab, beams and columns. Similarly, for the shear wall as well, provision of minimum bar diameters, spacing, maximum spacing of bars, development length, covers, all these parameters shall be as per IS456 or based on your relevant code that you are designing for your RCC structure. Refer relevant SP codes like SP34, 16 for detailing of concrete structures and specific applicable details for the slab, staircase and special elements like cobbles. Similarly, provide locations of splices and work with site to ensure that it is being followed on site as well. Now see, for checking drawings, Verify the BO2 items with respect to the structural drawings and mention them whenever it is applicable. Prepare the general notes drawing along with the foundation drawing. And the last most important point is coordination. See, coordination is the process of organizing people or groups so that they can work together properly and well-mannered before starting any particular design. So in this process, confirm the latest applicable revisions with the architect, their file locations and also ask about work in progress. Discuss the site levels, geotechnical reports, specific challenges for the existing site, their tendered consideration with the project manager in order to finalize your design. You can review the general layout, review machine foundation, 
their location, surrounding pits if any and the underground work which is ongoing in future. Prepare a detailed design philosophy before undertaking the work. This will help you out to finalize your design and all will be at the same level in the coordination part. Framing plan should be prepared either manually or by a civil draftman and framing plan of ground floor slab should be reviewed from the bottom for the aesthetic perspective. If there is no fall ceiling, that point also you need to keep in mind. Include expansion joints if required, floor to floor heights, cavity depths and toppings. Similarly, detail age of slab locations, that means things which will be moving around during the sketch design but by early detail design, slab edges should be set and this particularly applicable mainly for the lift area, deck slab, staircase area, openings and cutouts. Similarly, column locations, unless this is deferred to the structural engineering, everyone should know and agree on who controls the column locations and finalize it before executing. Projections in the slab, lintel or at any other particular level. Review the staircase sections and lift sections specifically since it affects the design and framing. And engineer's feedback to architect is the most important portion here. Approximate column sizes, beam sizes based on the spans and loading requirement. You can discuss expansion joints which are required for the temperature stresses and making building regular for the seismic performance. Based on that, feedback on feasibility of the span and floor structural depth. That is also one of the important points that you need to keep in mind and feedback on feasibility of the glazing locations and their sizes. Similarly, areas require special structural attention or material service coordination. Similarly, incorporate downtakes in the drawings right after from the early stages to avoid any misconceptions during the design stage. Drainage scheme for the roof. Uh, I mean, in case of steel structure, a uh, slope structure versus tapered grade. What philosophy you want to follow that you need to identify and finalize. Location of cutouts for the service shaft and its top covering details. Similarly, closing of vertical ducts in the elevation with lowers fins etc location of cutouts or sleeves in the beams for electrical and hvac elevation beams which are passing through the such facets should be particularly reviewed with the architect to avoid any confusion for the construction practice similarly expected parapet locations and their heights for assist size coordination review beam sizes and the implication on the elevation for the beam size purpose expected structural sizes to ensure the architectural language that has to be satisfied ensure that the beam sizes on periphery of the building is same depth irrespective of the span to ensure proper interior design for the offices and the canteen buildings also areas with structure to be left exposed including concrete floors and discuss expectation for the finished appearance that will help to finalize your project easily and that's a wrap by following these steps you'll be well on your way to creating a robust and efficient structural design remember the key to success in structural design is not just about getting the numbers right it's about understanding how all these pieces fit together now if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to civil nirman for more in-depth content and as always feel free to drop your questions or suggestions in the comments below remember don't just learn software learn concepts thank you